Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back or welcome for the first time. Today we're painting a variety of flowers. This is what we're doing. It's not a this is like, of course it is. That's me. So we are painting a, an Icelandic puppy, we're painting a peony, we're painting an anemone, and also dogwood. And the idea is that what really makes flowers recognizable is the center that they have. These are all different in their centers. I'm excited to teach this to you. Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna have a bit of fun today. I'm using a number 12 round. This is from the, the, from the Christy Rice um, brush collection, her second one. And we're going to do four flowers, as I've explained, but let's just, just get into it. Just do it. So we've got some pink. We're gonna start with our, kind of our peony. Now I'm getting the pink ready but I'm gonna do my center first. And we are going to use a number two round. It's already a little dirty. I just painted something with green. And my biggest concern today is, let me just get this a little bit more sprayed down. Things dry really fast where I live. Um, I am not so much concerned about you know reality as I am concerned about Let's get the, the middle, kind of the middle part accurate. And so, um, and not totally accurate, but anyway, this is my interpretation. So the centers are really what brings a lot, a sets apart and kind of brings alive your florals. And that's one of the main ways you recognize flowers because of the centers and what we're accustomed to and used to. And so the peony always has this classic, beautiful yellow center. So we're just doing this little kind of starburst thing happening here. <clears throat> then I've got my number 12 round. I'm gonna grab some really watery pink paint. And honestly, we're just going to start making some marks on our paper, okay? You know, peonies are just so gorgeous and so fluffy and I love them. And so we're just trying to emulate that gorgeous fluffiness with really light paint and getting those watery petals on our paper. And, you know, don't worry too much about the shapes that you're creating. Uh, we will be doing details later. We just wanna get those petals outlined just so that we have that all kind of out there, the basic shape, and details will come later. So it's nothing to be worried about or concerned about at this time. And even if you just had like a circle, it kind of looked like a blob, you know what? That would work details can come later okay so this will be our peony so now we're gonna do the poppy and this is gonna be more of a an Icelandic poppy and we've got a nice green kind of star shaped center the cicada bugs are back happy summer to you I hope you're enjoying <laughs> they have lots of things to sing and I do apologize I realize we're doing kind of a star shape maybe six points there we go my um, autofocus was on, and so it was zooming in and out the last bit of footage, so I apologize for that. And we've got it fixed now. Okay, so we have this happening, and now we're going to add in the lovely, um, the lovely yellow bits, the stamen and all the things. So let's grab some of that on our number two brush. And just the way I do it is I just kind of do these little bits here. If it's not moving too much on your brush, then you can just try again. So little lines around this green center. And I then like to make some kind of little dot marks, kind of like this. But they're all just connected to the tops. And the stamen are just gorgeous, yellow and green, contrasting each other and being super fancy. Okay, now we'll take our large brush. And for this poppy, I don't know, I'd, I'll probably just choose this color here. Icelandic poppies are very different than the classic ones with the, with the black center. And they just, they have layers of petals. Of course, what doesn't? But we're just kind of, you know, going really loosey-goosey, allowing the paint to spread and just to look really fun and flowy. So the point of this video is to give you an idea of how these centers work together alongside the petals, of course, to create this, these gorgeous florals and how you can recognize them when you see the centers in the future, if you haven't memorized them before. 
Um, a lot of the centers are very unique to the different flowers, not to say there's no crossover, because there is, but it's just fun to be aware of that and to be able to recognize it and paint it as well. All right, and we can add in details, of course, later because that's what we love to do. I think I do want to add in some wet on wet um, details though, just like touching down, allowing some of that watery saturated paint just to spread. And we'll just see what that does for now. This one too, I've got a hair. Let's pluck that off. It's a little wet still. I can, whoops, dab your brush. Sometimes there's just too much liquid and you can just kind of add in some more pink here just to be kind of fun. You can even start to do some like line details. You know, what, what in the, well, what in the world? Let's just do it. Just add in a little bit more color here. And I'm not trying to cover over what we have, just trying to give it some pizzazz and some details today. There we go, just a little bit to cover over, but still have some of those original details there. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is the anemone. And the anemone has a beautiful black center and we start with a circle. So I'm going to swirl my brush around, grab some really saturated, lovely paint. And we're gonna go about right here. So I'm going to make a circle. I like to leave a little bit of white space just for a highlight. And you know, we might need a little bit more watery paint. And we're gonna make this bigger. Hi cicadas, how you doing? You're telling me it's still summer, yay. Except my kids going back to school tells me it's not necessarily summer, at least not, not the one we've been enjoying. It's different now. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do some line details and you can use this number two brush or you could even grab like a liner brush if I have one here, like this. Let's try that really thin and you're going to draw out lines. And so it's always kind of, almost looks like eyelashes guys. So you wanna go straight out from wherever you put, wherever your center is, straight out. You don't wanna just like do, you know, to the side, you want it to be um, following where that center is and I like to make them pretty thin sometimes they get thicker that's okay and just making sure that they're about the same length and then to me the fun part is adding in the dots so again the liner brush I sometimes run out of um, well spreadability because we don't have enough water with the pigment so I'm just trying to make sure I have enough and we're just going to do these little stamen dots all around that center just varying it up so that they're not all the same you know height and that's great just like so and then when you are going to bring out the petals you've got to be just mindful not to touch on that part or we're going to have a spreading situation happen which is okay we go with it but that might not be ideal and so we've got some red paint here, mixing it where the pink was. Just a slight variation, adding more water in. And we're gonna attempt to do this, okay? So we're just doing this lovely light petal here. There's a lot of petals on anemone and we do want them to touch. We'll do probably some petals in the back. And then when things are dry, you know, feel free to do a bit more. Um, petals closer or draw the petals closer to everything so that you know they're closer to that middle section but right now we don't want to touch down so we're just being extra careful and that's okay to do all right how are you feeling about this video so far are you enjoying your painting okay one more this is kind of that awkward area and as you can see I'm trying to go a little bit wider with my petals and then kind of bringing them in a little bit but yet yeah, then going around and making sure that they touch, basically touch each other so that um, it's a nice tight floral situation. And then you can also go behind, maybe some lighter paint, go behind and just do a few more petals too here. And there, there's a lot, they have a lot of layers. So don't be afraid to put that in and emulate that in your floral painting. Let's just close up some of these gaps too. And 
okay, so that's our anemone for now. And then the last one here we're gonna do is a dogwood. For our dogwood, we are going to pretend that we're doing white. And since I don't have white watercolor, usually if you don't have white watercolor, you kind of use like a tan color or a gray color, bluish color, and then we fill in the details. So I've got that mixed up there. Going to grab my number two round brush. Of course, that's what I've been using. And we're going to do these little, kind of like these little balls that all stack together in a circle and create that pretty center. So a little bit more water and want to leave a little bit of space between them too. So we're just kind of matching it up to what we've already done really close together. And it's going to create a circle for the center of our dogwood. Why dogwood? I don't know. I have to show you guys my sample. My sample is right here. And these are just some sketches that I did of real florals in a floral book. And I thought, you know what? How what fun it would be to do a video on the center so that we can recognize what things are. So I think it got bigger than necessarily it should be, but you know what? It's art. We can do what we want and that's okay. I'm gonna grab some pink. And I've got kind of this gray mess over here, but we're just going to use it. So they have these really interesting um, four petals that are skinny. They go out like this and kind of come out like that. Actually, they kind of come out more than that, but we can, we can just do it how we want. And so they are directly across from each other. So we're going to emulate that. And I feel like, oh man, that's really darker than I wanted. So I can just take a clean, damp brush and take off some of that paint. The idea is that we are marking out the space and then we'll add our details. And so we don't really need that to be very dark. All right, let's do the other ones here. And so they are going to be touching each other. Um, well, at this connection point here, but the actual petals don't need to touch like out here. I don't know why I think that they would. Anyways, and then one more. This is that awkward part for me where I'm like, okay, angle your brush and let's try to get this right. You can also rotate your paper, but it is taped down because I'm trying to keep it in place. So I'm not rotating, but you rotate your paper if you need to and if you want to. This one is really perfectly round, how funny. So just kind of like that, that is, that is my dogwood for today. Just like so, pretty simple, not too hard. And then I'm seeing in some places, some of these dogwood have some really cool like markings right at the tips in the middle. So I'm just gonna wet on wet, put in some green here and we will let that dry and let that kind of spread around. Okay, I say okay a lot, okay, okay. So now we're gonna start going back to our florals and hit them up with some details. So we may do two layers of paint, we may do three. It depends on how we feel because honestly, I usually end up doing three. So, and I already did a little wet on wet, which it got a little wonky, but that's okay. We're doing a mid-tone here. It doesn't matter if it got wonky because you can paint over it. And now we can get a little bit of that white space as well. So I do have a little bit of a sample. It's for a tutorial that I did. It's already posted on my YouTube but just a little bit here, let me move this around. Because I do follow reference photos, I try. Um, I find that to be helpful. So we're just gonna do some nice dark bits here and then kind of gravitate it upwards and getting some more. And I do like to do a lot of it around the center. And so you don't have to, you know, do the marks in the same way. I will be spreading this out with some clean water um, but sometimes I just want to go a little darker and just, you know, kind of see how that goes. And it looks a little wonky now, but we're going to clean brush, clean brush, dab brush, spread paint. And you'll see what I mean in a minute when we're just, we're just trying to put that color down and, you know, make some pretty marks and make some fluffiness that we didn't have before so that we can get um, our peony to look like it has a lot of fluffiness happening. And if you have not heard before, I am not a realistic painter. I paint loosely 
and I paint for joy's sake. And there's a wonderful term coined by my friend Christy Rice, who has an amazing watercolor channel, channels, and on YouTube just has amazing ideas. I love her work. But yeah, painting for joy, or art for joy's sake, painting for joy's sake, what makes you happy? And, you know, I paint for mental health sake as well, just to give me some grounding, give me something to do if I'm feeling anxious or angry or frustrated. We're letting this hang out right now. I think she's doing good. We're gonna start with the poppy. We've got already that more saturated orangey color. I'm just gonna go with that using my number eight round brush for the mid-tones. We're gonna scooch over, guys. Thank you so much. So these poppies, I mean, they, you know, you can kind of do the same type of thing. We're going to just experiment here. There's kind of some cool fluffiness happening with some of these petals. So just bending and twisting around. So I'm just trying to emulate that right now. I think it looks kind of pretty. And this is the mid-tone, so you know, there's no reason to be nervous. We've got the dark ones that we can put in later. And I just want you to have a lot of fun with this, um, creating some cool things with the edges as well. So now rinsing, dabbing, okay? And we are just going to spread out some of that paint here. So I'm gonna try, this is already dry. I'm gonna try to scrub this out a little bit. Um, I live where there's lots of airplanes flying by and my paint just kind of starts to dry, you know, if I have to wait five, 10 minutes for them to stop flying. So anyway, so we're just scrubbing and we're just trying to um, blend it a little bit more because I didn't, my whole point was not to leave it like that, but it's okay. We can work with that and we can do some fun lines too. Like right here, for example, my whole point was I wanted to just you know blend things out pretty quickly. So you have some texture, but then you can see that you've got some cool um, kind of petals over that are overlapping. Some of them, I'm gonna just kind of like etch that one out, overlapping or, you know, they're darker here. So you've got them overlapping the ones underneath and we can still, we can still show that. So now we're seeing some more dimension and just blending it gives a lot more texture and fun to this beautiful, beautiful poppy. Don't forget to paint in some of that white space too so that it has a bit more of a natural look. And I like to paint kind of underneath there too, because the white of the paper is really not what we're supposed to see or what we're gonna see. Um, but it's okay if you do, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna harm anything. All right, I'm always trying to paint fast. When I know when, um, when the planes are flying more frequently and I'm like, okay, paint fast because you know there's gonna be that hour or two where they're just like flying over and over and over. So, all right, we're gonna to get to our anemone. Got my number eight round, more of that red paint here, more saturated. It's okay if it mixes in with purple, it's not a big deal. So we're going to try to emulate petals again, just kind of like these other guys. And this is that second layer. So, you know, we can do a third and just create a bit more contrast and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just looking at my reference photo here and just, you know, adding in where I feel um, we need some fluffy petals. And then I'm just going to blend out while I have the time quickly to blendy blend. Some of this is going to be a bit more stark and others might be, you know, thinner lines. And just kind of figure it out as you go. Let me take some of that off of there. And a little bit here for some of those marks. So this is just experimenting. You're experimenting, you're placing the colors, you know, that underpainting part, and you're just kind of seeing what's going to make this look more 3D. And Right now, since it is that underpainting, it's just going to be, and let's, let's get some of this filled in. You only have one or two brush strokes to see that starts to bleed. And so you just have to be careful as you're going around these. You can't really go around them too many times if you wanna keep things from turning gray, <laughs> you know. And so like with this one here, okay. So 
the big details or what I'll put in later as we start to, you know, use the, the detail brush. We can add in a little bit more dark color too right now if you want. And just kind of leave it. But this one is going to take a little bit more work um, when we add in those details. So we'll just kind of let it hang out and sit. And go to our dogwood next. So for my dogwood, I want to do a little bit of light pink here, kind of just over overall. Uh, and then we're gonna do some lines too, line details later. That will be our last layer of paint. So here I'm just, you know, adding this on and I do want to keep it really light and I'm blending things together. And you don't have to put this if you don't want to. I'm just creating a couple different tones. You know, we were gonna keep it white, maybe we're doing pink now. You know, just gonna play around, fill in that little center the best that you can. Don't worry about it too much. Don't worry, actually, don't worry with painting. There's really no place for it. Blendy blend. There's many petals out there in life where there's lots of different tones and shades in the actual petal itself. So you can kind of do whatever makes sense, whatever you like. Okay, now it's time to start etching out some details to your flowers. So if you wanna go really dark, you can. You don't have to. I find that it just gives a nice realism to your florals. And so, you know, you can kind of use that to etch out some petal spaces if you'd like. So I look at how I'm holding my brush. I'm actually holding it pretty tight for, you know, being a loose floral artist because I do want to get those marks, you know, very defined, at least for what we're painting today. A little bit of a line there. And this is just going to, I'm kind of going over that second layer in some ways of paint that I put down, which is that second layer. And this is helping us to define the edges and then, you know, causing some of these petals to come forward um, and maybe the other ones to recede. And that's just going to help with our fluffy look. So I'm not doing all of them like that. And I'm certainly not keeping it just to the petals in front, but I'm finding, you know, this really helps for that realistic look. Not that I'm going for that, but it's just going to give a really nice fullness and 3D look to your florals. So now you can take your number eight round that's been dabbed, and if you want to, you can kind of blend out some of this, or you can just leave it. I kind of, kind of liking this, um, but I just thought maybe a little bit of blending, at least just to show how you might do that. And I feel like you don't really have to do much. You could even just leave it like this too, if you want. I think over here, they're kind of craving some some definition too so I don't know what do you think I think that's pretty good and then for our center I'm just gonna go around and put in some more yellow and actually I'm not seeing that show up much so we're gonna grab from this orangey yellow just to accentuate some of these stamen right here and I'm just gonna a little in the center just a little bit. We don't have to worry too much about it. I'm just gonna let it chill right there. All right, for a poppy, we're doing the same type of thing. We've got a little bit more orange here, a little bit more concentrated. So you can do a different color or you can do some more concentrated version of what you already have. And so with these, you can do some lines and give that that classic kind of poppy look with those little lines, the, the curvature, curvatures, uh, the creases and that kind of thing. So you could do lines if you want, you could do squiggles. Just want them to come alive and be so fun and fancy. And I'm actually going to go over some of the places that I had already put lines and we're going to accentuate them. 
we're gonna make them look lovely and come alive right and you can work fast or you can work slower I kind of like to work fast <laughs> and I'm trying to learn to slow down I think being more methodical is going to give me a little bit easier time of it sometimes um, you know and I'm just gonna blend some of this out got some darker petals on top maybe look at that but this guy is you know he's starting to get or she starting to get a little bit fancy and fun and a little bit more here these Icelandic poppies are just so very different than the classic one with the black center and I just find them to be so beautiful all right a little bit more orangey there and I'm going to darken up my green a little bit more a little bit more concentrated green here actually I'm gonna real scrub it really scrub it there we go so a little bit more I'm not covering up the green that's there I just wanted it to be a little bit more stand out a little bit more and trying to clean my brush there's so much green all over when I dip into my yellow from my green brush you know with my green brush we get a lot of contamination so but that's okay all right there's our center there you know I actually want to add a little poppy bud because the classic poppy bud is gonna make this look like a classic poppy so let's just add one in because why not it's never too late for pizzazz so we'll have to add it in now but then we're gonna have to add in some greenery and things over it once it's dry um, but we can do the stem now so I'm gonna do that at this point and then we'll add in the other green parts that we need to so it's a really beautiful beautiful arched look at that arched stem and he's disappearing underneath behind whatever we'll come back to that piece so now we're gonna do the anemone and I've got the red here on the palette so I'm gonna get that ready I want it to be concentrated but I don't want it to be so thick that I can't paint with it you know that's just not helpful <laughs> it's not helpful okay let's etch in some beautiful marks here for our anemone reminding ourselves that we are using that center more than anything to be able to recognize the floral and that we don't have to rely necessarily on the petals. The petals are important, you know, color and shape and all that, but our centers are gonna give away, you know, what, what we've got going on. And so I'm just trying to kind of remember, you know, where the, the petals were and we have where the petals, because the ones that are in front versus the ones in the back, so I'm gonna take my brush here, it should be clean. Again, blendy blend as we did before. Just kind of blending some of those lines out and creating some depth here. And of course I have the texture that we already put down before and I love that. I think that looks good. Just a little extra now. And just creating some more of that beautiful um, floral. Let's grab our little number two again. A little bit more of these lines. So I had been using the number eight to do some of this work. And um, I realized, well, it's just blobbing on so much more paint I didn't have. Oh, what am I doing? A lot of control over, you know, the lines and how thick or thin. And so I just switched to this and I love it working for me so this is you know it's still pretty loose we're just etching out you know some corner parts here but we've got our classic center we've got our pretty flower coming together and of course once again I do want to put in some lines so we will do that and then we will end with our dogwood and then you can step back and see your whole thing and kind of decide how you like it. Do you feel like it ended up looking how you wanted it to? And maybe, you know, maybe not. You can always try it again. I'm just using my brush just to kind of dab and take some of that bright white away. And we're left with a little bit of gray, which is actually okay. I think that works. It works. 
So clean number eight round. Um, do I want to blend these out? Not necessarily. I think I'm just gonna leave it probably as I'm still painting. And now we just have a pretty anemone right there doing her thing in all her glory. Okay, the dogwood is the last one. <laughs> as we're standing, sitting, sitting, sitting here, I'm gonna grab some brown on my palette. I did want to just add a little bit of a, like a, a stick situation here. And he's gonna be kind of wonky. Uh, maybe, you know, the, the stick is there and it kind of comes out this way. And he's just attached like that just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look, a branch right there. Okay, there we are. And before we add in our lines, I do want to darken up the center of these. So more saturated paint and just little circles, little, little dots, I should say. Stippling, but slowly and methodically. There we go. And before I do this, Let's tackle this guy, because it's actually pretty dry. Um, I like to skip around. If you didn't know that, I do. I do skip around. And so, you know, there's just some encasing happening here in this poppy. I have to apologize because the footage died. My phone died while I was doing the lines and also the poppy, I believe the poppy um, little bud here. So I didn't get to show you, but let me show you real quickly kind of what I did. So I just have that watery mix. It's a little bit darker though than, than what we used to initially paint this. And we're just adding in these wispy lines that are curving around the curvature of the petal like this. And then we can add some more lines there if we want to just for some pizzazz and making sure that you curve with the contour of the petal so it looks the most natural. And that's how those veins of the flowers would look in nature. So not that we have to emulate, we like to make things look recognizable, at least I do. So this is the angle that's harder. Just take your time, don't worry about it. And those are our flowers, our peony, our poppy, our anemone, and our dogwood. All right, friends, I had so much fun painting the centers and the flowers. I hope you did too. We kind of talked a little bit randomly about some of the things, but I just hope and encourage that you can have a happy and positive narrative as you're painting, as you're learning and discovering what makes you creative, what makes your heart happy, and how you can take care of yourself. See you guys soon on the next video.